Christina Tsinsun Ramirez, president of Next Gen America. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. So your organization recently conducted a poll, uh, not only for Texas, but uh, in other states as well. Um, and I was wondering, what did that poll reveal? So, you know, the youth vote is incredibly important. The largest generational voting bloc are now young people in this country. And in 2018 and 2020, we've seen historic record turnout of young people. And what is clear in this midterm is that we expect, again, record-breaking turnout of young people. Um, they overwhelmingly are going to break for Democrats and that the Dobbs decision overturning uh, row and access to safe legal and abortion is driving thousands of young people to register it. here in our home state of Texas. We've seen a surge of young people registering 37% of all new registrations post the Dobbs decision in Texas are um, from young people. And it is now obviously uh, here in Texas um, and many states have their own laws now and the new law here in Texas that went into effect late last month bans most abortions with the exception to save the life of the mother. So what is the biggest concern for uh, these women that you speak about, these young women who are uh, registering to vote as it relates to, let's say, a uh, congressional bill? Well, you know, what's clear is that young people, two in three of the young people we surveyed said they believe that abortion is on the ballot this election. And so people understand 76% um, of young people were opposed, 76% of young women were opposed to the Dobbs decision, 76%. So overwhelmingly young women, especially um, across the country feel like their health, their most private decisions um, have really that basic fundamental freedom has been taken away from them. And so it is mo mobilizing and motivating an entire generation of young women to either vote for the first time in the midterm or go and get registered. And uh, are they concerned that, you know, there could be, if Congress goes, Republican, as we have heard for the last several months, at least in the House, that there could be a national uh, law? Yes, that's right. That's why two and threes believe that abortion is on the ballot this election, that they are fearful that not only will it be outlawed in places like Texas, but there will be a national ban on abortion, making it illegal everywhere across the country to access safe legal abortion. And if we look at what happened in Kansas, um, you know, uh, uh, an initiative there to um, further restrict abortion was overwhelmingly um, uh, defeated. And you saw huge swaths of people voting for the first time, especially young women that have never voted before on any initiative like that. Um, it was just, uh, we can see that this issue is so personal, so critical for so many people's lives, their health, their future, their families, that um, people feel like I was talking to a young woman actually at UT Austin um, last week that said, I have to get registered because it feels like it's do or die. Literally, I feel like my life is on the line this election. It's one thing to register. It's another to actually go out and vote. Um, and so how concerned are you? Young people uh, don't tend to vote as, as in larger numbers as older people. Um, That's great. Right. So tell me a little bit about your efforts to make sure that they actually get to the polls. I mean, at NextGen, we are the country's largest youth voting rights organization. Last election, we helped mobilize one in nine young people to the polls. And that's why we've chosen also to invest in Texas because we are the third youngest state. Only Utah and Alaska are younger than Texas. One in three eligible voters is under the age of 30. But for that power, electoral power to be really felt, people have to come out and vote. So we're contacting millions of young people, um, texting them, calling them, being on campuses and making sure they make their voices heard this election. We have seen big shifts in voter turnout. So over half of young eligible voters voted last election um, across the country. That's the highest youth voter turnout in American history. Um, in 2018, 2022 is projected to be on par with 2022 um, with the youth vote turnout that helped Democrats win back the House. Um, from 2020? Uh, you're from, saying 2018, that the... from 2018, oh. uh, we're projected to see turnout from what we saw in 2018, which was also a historic turnout for midterms because, of course, midterms have lower turnout than the general election. And what do you make of the Texas Democratic Party um, urging uh, its local party chairs, its local precinct chairs, and others 
to mobilize women in their communities on the abortion issue? In the data is overwhelmingly clear that most women and especially young women are completely opposed to the overturning of Roe v. Wade and including in Texas, um, including with Republican women that this taking us back to a time where we had abortion was not safe and not legal. We decided as a country to make abortion safe and legal because we were tired of seeing our mothers, our sisters and friends dying in backroom abortions. And I think young women understand that that is the consequence of this decision. And let me ask you, because when you look at the polls and certainly uh, this issue is key among Democrats um, who are polled and, and among younger Democrats, like you said, but I'm wondering, you know, there's still inflation, concerns over pricing, uh, certainly at the supermarket, et cetera. And I'm wondering how, how do you counterbalance that? I mean, I know you have this issue here, but you know, when you talk about people's pocketbooks, ability to buy food, et cetera, are you concerned that that is still a bigger issue? I mean, I think that Democrats and all candidates have to respond to people's real economic needs. And the fact is that while our economy has started to turn around, we still need to do a lot more to make sure that every single family can meet their basic needs. And so there has been progress, the decision to cancel a big portion of student debt. Um, for example, half of Latinos um, will see their student debt completely wiped out. So that is transformative. I was just meeting with another young woman, Vianne Preciado, in um, the Valley, who had her student debt canceled. Her dad's a mechanic, her mom's a cosmetologist. This isn't just gonna transform her life, but her entire family's life who's been trying to help her pay off that debt. So those economic initiatives by Democrats are helping. And of course, the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, which is gonna invest billions into building a new clean energy economy. Um, but at the end of the day, when we look at the most popular issues to address the economic pain that people feel, whether it's raising the minimum wage or outstanding support for unions in this country um, or paid parental leave, that those issues, it's clear where Democrats stand and where Republicans are totally opposed to even basic guarantees in raising the minimum wage to match inflation. I know there has been some controversy surrounding uh, the president's uh, executive order to uh, cancel some of the uh, student debt as far as their schooling, their uh, university studies, et cetera. And I'm wondering how concerned are you that, you know, people who didn't go to college, um, our taxpayers are, are, are paying for this and that, you know, that angle uh, of people out there who may not be so happy about this. Well, it's clear that the vast majority of Americans support canceling student debt. Um, every single poll shows that. And that this is an investment in the American people, right? That this isn't about policy, this is about people. I mentioned Vianney um, first in her family to go to college. Another young woman, um, uh, uh, Shelly, that I was meeting with in Houston, she grew up in the foster care system, saw her student debt wiped out, felt like she can finally start a family. The truth is that this is just a step in addressing building the 21st, edu 21st century educational system we need. That at the end of the day, we have to make sure that college is affordable and accessible to every single American that wants it. That when we decided as a country to make uh, K through 12 public education free, people said back then that was crazy, but what a high school diploma is today, what a college degree is today, is what a high school diploma was. So we have to build a system that is better equipped to invest in our greatest asset as a country, which is the American people. And that's why the vast majority of Americans support canceling student debt and taking the next step to make sure college is accessible to everyone. Christina Tsinsun Ramirez, president of Next Gen America. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.